Leading the squad ain't just about giving orders. It's about setting an example for your fellow Helldivers to follow. Y'all are about to see how stuns, stagger, and laser beams can support your squad by leading from the front. Welcome back to the SES Emperor of Democracy. Today, I'm going to show y'all how to lead a squad of random teammates to the win against the bots. These uppity walking toasters can be a tough foe for some, but with just a little coordination, communication, and a well-planned loadout, we can send them straight back to the junkyard where they belong. We'll go over the basics of using choke points, support and fire, and how to layer our stratagems with our team for maximum effect. Now that you know what the video is about, let's go spill some oil. Before we get to talking shop, I just want to quickly mention that this match was recorded on difficulty 7 instead of Helldive by mistake. That said, I'm hoping you Helldivers that have yet to break into the higher difficulties will be able to use this as a primer for getting those super samples. Everything we talk about today is still going to apply at Helldive difficulty, but since I already recorded and edited this before I noticed that the difficulty was wrong, we're going to be taking some shore leave with some divers in the lower difficulty, and we'll get back to Helldive in the next one. With that disclaimer out of the way, here's our goals for this mission. Use cover and choke points to funnel the bots in so we can lay down some hellacious firepower on those failures of humanity. Cover in our squad using our stun grenades and the stagger from our Punisher Plasma, and layering our stratagems with our team so we're not all throwing a bunch of eagles at the same target. I think these goals are pretty easy to keep in mind throughout the mission, but I just wanted to post them up here so y'all know what I'm thinking while I'm playing with this loadout. Speaking of loadout, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one because I want to focus on the team play, but here it is. This is what we're using. I will be talking about these weapons as they come up in the video, so don't worry. You'll get your explanation, but if you want to just copy the loadout, here it is. I'll be talking about our weapons and stuff throughout the game, but I really want to get to the team play, so let's talk about what we're doing. I just came in and dropped on a mission that was already in progress, so I was able to kind of bail my teammates out by clearing out all those enemies that were on their flanks, and now I'm pushing up to this radar station because it looked like the natural next place they would go. So I figure I'd go clear out the enemies and get it ready for my team. My loadout is really well equipped for doing this kind of frontline duty. I have explosive resistant armor, I've got stuns, and I've got a lot of stagger. So it doesn't really matter what I run into, I've got a tool to handle it. But with the radar station clear, my team's good to push on up and then we can kind of decide where we want to go from here. There's a lot of point of interest in some of this way you guys want to go that way. 200 meters. Affirmative. So here, S2's made a suggestion that we go investigate those points of interest that the radar revealed. I give him the affirmative, and I march off with L4. But, because I'm a clever Helldiver and I know how to count, I noticed that he just threw seven grenades, and there's no supply backpack on his back. So that means he's cheating. Well, more accurately, he's using an exploit, which I do not condone. And if I was hosting this game, I'd have kicked his butt right out. But since sometimes we got to work with hell divers that we might not quite jive with, I do want to show y'all that I'm still going to support this dude, even though he is basically cheating. So the way I'm doing that is I'm getting these bot drops called in right on top of me, because he's going off to explore those points of interest. I don't have infinite grenades, but I do have a lot more skill, and I'm able to handle these things with ease. So I saw that hell bomb, I figured I'd drop the free napalm strike, that was not part of the loadout, just came free with the mission, and I'm baiting those enemies to come forward towards the hell bomb. As soon as I see that devastator poke his head up, I'm shooting the hell bomb and waiting for that big boom to just deliver righteous justice to these enemies of humanity. With that bot drop out of the way, I've cleared a little bit of space for L4. He's got at least two, maybe three minutes where another bot drop can be called in. Now this might look like I'm kind of wandering off on my own, slipping back into my solo helldiver ways, but I promise y'all I'm not. This heavy outpost is right in the way of L4 and him going about those points of interest collecting samples for the whole team. So I figured I'd go and take it out since I don't really want to be around him, you know, dealing with his grenade exploit. So if I'm not going to be palling around with him, I might as well clear the way for him. And this is going to be a consistent theme throughout the game. I make sure that I'm in the front. I'm taking the brunt of the hits for my team and I'm clearing out anything that's particularly dangerous for them to make the match easier for all of us, y'all. Because I have a loadout that really makes me effective at being the front line. So I don't really know what they're going to be dropping in with. I don't really care to look at every piece of armor and kind of make judgments that way. I don't have expectations for my team. I have expectations for myself to help them. But with this heavy outpost cleared out and my stratagems on cooldown, I'm looking to regroup with L4. Especially because he tells me there's a friendship door over in that area. And I want those super credits and those medals, both for me and my team. I can always use super credits, y'all, even though I'm maxed on everything else. So I get to heading over there, but I didn't notice this Hulk, and as I was typing on my way, I get blasted in the face and die. 
Big shame, but it's all right. L4 is going to reinforce me. So I'm able to drop down, and I'm going to go help him out with the door. But as soon as I pop out of the hell pod, boom, tragedy strikes. Well, more like stupidity mixed with a little bit of hilariousness. If y'all like seeing me get squished like a terminid beneath the heel of my boot, then consider liking the video. That one click helps me out a lot and lets me know y'all are enjoying the content. If you want to see more educating and entertaining Helldivers 2 content, consider checking out my other videos or subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate it and nothing brightens my day more than knowing I helped out my fellow Helldivers. Speaking of, we're finally able to link back up with our squad and we see that they're in a bit of a pickle. Given that the terrain looks like the surface of the frickin' moon, I'm gonna surmise that they've been fighting pretty hard here. So I'm gonna take the front, let them kind of back off, resupply up, get ready, and you see they're supporting me with some auto cannon fire there coming in from the left. But I'm just wailing away at these little bots. I see the bot drop called in, so I'm getting ready to throw a stratagem at it, but the whole time I'm sticking behind this dragon's tooth, which is a real life anti-tank thing, but I'm sticking behind this dragon's tooth and making sure I stay low to the ground so I don't get popped in the face by a rocket while I'm throwing stratagems out. Now in this case, pretty much all the enemies are focused on me. And that means that my team behind me is able to keep raining down that auto cannon fire without any problem. While I am able to keep myself safe with the stagger from my Punisher Plasma and my stun grenades. I'm able to easily incapacitate these hulks so my auto cannon fire support and take them out. And as soon as all the big threats are dealt with, I'm going to move up through this trench system and keep the pressure on. I know that the bots are going to keep spawning out of that fabricator until I destroy it. So I give a thank you to my team for giving me that cover and I keep pushing up. My objective is to destroy that fabricator before linking back up with my squad. So I'm using any bit of cover I can, raining down hell with my Punisher Plasma until I can get close enough to chunk an eagle at it. But unfortunately, because sometimes I'm a dumbass, I didn't notice that that giant cliff was on either side. So I'm waiting for the eagle to come in, I hear the explosion, and I realize that I'm dumb. So I throw an orbital at it instead, because that's probably going to hit it when the eagle could. Orbital Strike's able to polish off that fabricator and we're able to move on to the next objective, which thankfully is very close. Now I cut some of this for y'all just for the sake of time, but as soon as you activate that ore extraction, it's like ringing the dinner bell. Every single bot that's able to is going to come running, you're going to get a whole bunch of dropships. Right here, y'all see how many stratagems are in that same area, so I don't need to throw anything else. I know that whatever those are is probably going to handle it. Except here I do see this tank, and I know that needs to go right now. So I'm going to throw my precision strike at it before turning my back and helping out my team a little bit by trying to get the aggro off of them shooting that bot in the weak spot. Unfortunately it doesn't work, but I know that my job here is to keep this flank secure while they deal with those threats. I'm using the cover of this rock to give them support and fire and basically keep the bots back until they're able to come help me. I don't need to rush over to them and kind of deal with, that, with their stuff because I know they can handle it. I see some rockets come from up top, so I ping it for my team. Make sure you're communicating like that, especially with pings. And whenever I see a Hulk, I'm going to chunk a stun grenade at it. So right over there, I was able to stun the Hulk. My team's able to take it out, no problem. And uh, yeah, stun grenades just make dealing with Hulk super easy. And they also help with patrols and stuff, but that's a topic for another video. But I hope you all can see how I used my teammates' stratagems to kind of decide what to do in this situation. I know there's going to be a ton of bots coming pretty much all the time, so if I know that I can hold down one angle and it's going to keep my team safe, then that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to help out a lot with just getting the objective done. This objective requires a little bit of setup, because again, we're ringing the dinner bell, but on the main one, it's even more, y'all. So we want to get up on some high ground and know where the enemies are coming from, but as my teammate says... Hey, get ready, they're going to come for us. So we're going to do exactly that, by taking the high ground so we can see where the bots are coming from. Now, I would never recommend y'all stay up on the high ground against the bots, because the sheer overwhelming amount of firepower is just going to fill you full of holes, and you're going to go home in a casket or in a jar. So I see the dropship coming in, drop a big old bot drop on top of us, so I throw out that stun grenade followed up by an eagle. Looks like my team had generally the same idea, so I know I need to kind of hold off on my stratagems until they're really needed. I don't want to overlap with their stratagems any more than I absolutely have to. So I rely on my primary for a little bit until I see that bot drop come in and it's a little bit close, closer than I would like. So I throw out one of my three orbital lasers. I used another one at some point in the video. I don't remember when. I think it was when I was killing the fabricator. But we take them out with the heavy laser and this firepower is starting to be a bit much. But I do see that tank in the distance and the orbital laser kind of drifted over to that factory strider. And these types of tanks, weirdly, are way more dangerous than the cannon variety. So I make sure to throw the orbital out, deal with that guy. 
And then I noticed my teammate in a bit of a tough spot, followed up by an absolutely enormous bot drop of Devastators and a Hulk. So now we need to use this big old cliff face as cover and kind of funnel the bots in on one side while we just rain a bunch of stratagems down on top of them. As you can see, my teammates are throwing their eagles at them. And I noticed that this factor strider, it's got to be on its last legs, y'all, but it's still got those chin guns. So I'm going to use my laser cannon to take them out. And once they're offline, I'm going to try to run up and shoot this guy right in the eyeball. Give him that freedom-based LASIK surgery that the bots love so much. But just one little tickle to his belly, he falls over because he'd already been heavily damaged. I don't want y'all to get the wrong interpretation. Laser cannon absolutely can kill factor striders. It's never that quick. It was only that quick because it ate two orbital laser strikes. But we were able to polish everything off. I'd call in another artillery strike to kind of kill off those devastators that are underneath the factory strider. We got a few more bots being called in. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to make sure I'm behind some cover. I don't want to get blown up by my teammate's stratagems. Because again, remember y'all, unless they're doing it maliciously, if you get killed by a stratagem, it's either a complete accident that you couldn't have avoided or just you were not in the right spot. So I start laser beaming this tank, but my teammates see we're getting overwhelmed and call for a retreat. Alright, I think we should just run away. Agreed. I hope y'all can see what I've been talking about with just a little communication going a long way. One of my teammates called for a retreat. They all agreed, so I was like, let's do it, y'all. And we're all moving together at this point. So we were able to fight our way around to the outside of this giant rock outcropping so we don't have to push our way completely through that big old wad of bots. Instead, we fought around the outskirts until we were able to break away. But I noticed my team was taking the long way around, and I noticed this gap in the canyon. So I ping it, and ping follow me. Liberty bless them, they do. Now, I don't know if this is completely how it happened, but to me, I like to think that they're willing to follow me because I've been doing a good job of covering them, supporting them at every opportunity. So I like to think I've bought a little bit of trust with my team. And that trust is just invaluable, y'all. Another thing... I didn't think about this until it gets stuck, yeah. <laughs> Oof is that if we want to be a good teammate, we got to be willing to forgive errors. Er we're all human, we all make mistakes. I'm not going to fault whoever threw that resupply, even though I was desperately out of ammo. Because it's funny. It happens. I'd rather laugh about it than cry about it, and honestly, it's not worth the tears. We made it to extraction mostly in one piece, and as y'all can see, we got a lot of different lanes to cover here. So I need to know where the bots are coming from. I see a couple rocket devastators up on the hill, so I'm going to make that my priority for now. Because when you call in the extraction, what happens is that all the patrols on the map, this is what I know anyway, y'all. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I get something wrong. But from my understanding, as soon as you call in extraction, more patrols are going to spawn, and all the patrols on the map are going to make their way towards you. So when you see little pockets of enemies coming, that's probably a patrol that was out on the map that's coming towards you. But the big spawns are usually going to come from outside of the map, and then they're going to walk towards extraction. So a big part of succeeding on extraction is kind of judging where the enemies are. So this bot drop is called in just from the random enemies that are around. So I'm going to throw my ordnance at it because this is not in a good spot. I really want to have all the enemies funnel in from the north. So because this bot drop happened to the west, I'm making it my number one priority to clear it out. And as you can see, S2 and L4 kind of had the same idea. Now that I know they're watching that spot, I'm going to switch position. You don't want to have everybody on your team in a co-op game looking in the same direction when, you know, you can be, like, surrounded. So instead, I go deal with this Hulk, quick stun grenade, quick laser beam to the face, and I'm just going to watch this little break until I see S2 and L4 actually move position, and then I'll know I need to kind of readjust where I am. So you see, I'm sticking in the middle of my team because I'm ready to respond to any kind of threat. Now, I bailed out here because my teammate warned me that something bad might be coming in. I think it was that Eagle airstrike. And where I'm from on Super Earth, somebody tells you to run, you don't ask questions. You just start hauling ass. The rest of this extraction goes pretty smoothly, except for my atrocious aim with the laser cannon there. That was horrific. But because we've used our stratagems well, we've cooperated, we've each taken our little lane of fire, and we've appropriately handled it, we're able to kind of get out of this without any issue, but I want to use this time to kind of summarize what we should have learned. Against the bots, cover is key, and teamwork is going to help a lot. So the way we use cover and teamwork is usually moving from one set of cover, turning around, giving our friends some cover and fire so they can get away from whatever's chasing them, and then they'll do the same for us once they pass them. It's a bit of a, you know, I cover you, you cover me kind of thing. And when you apply that on the team level, any difficulty in this game is easy, especially when you're running with a team that's willing to cooperate and work together. It doesn't matter if y'all know each other, just as long as you're able to work together for the good of Super Earth. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. 
unless y'all really love this one, I'm probably not going to do much more content on anything lower than Helldav, but I do hope y'all have enjoyed the run and I hope you've learned something. Y'all are about to push me over to a thousand subscribers, so to say thank you, I'm cooking up something special for y'all. I've stayed quiet on comms so far, but y'all are going to see what a commissar can do on the mic. But as you can see, with just teamwork, cooperation, and a good attitude, we're able to get that outstanding patriotism, clear the map of the bot menace, and send them back to factory settings. Until next time, this is going to be Commissar Kai, signing out.